A couple of years ago, I designed and built this outfeed table for my saw stop table saw, and it's been a great addition to my shop. It's got drawers on this side for storage. It's got shelves on the back side for additional storage. It's got a torsion box top that has stayed dead flat and it can be leveled precisely to the table saw. It has wheels, so it's mobile and I can use it anywhere in my shop. And I've used it for everything from an outfeed table to assembly. I've pounded on it, I've nailed on it, I've done everything with it. I've even sat on it a few times when I needed to take a break. I'm really proud of the fact and frankly humbled and honored by the fact that thousands and thousands of people have watched the video series. As of just recently, over 500 people have downloaded the drawings and the construction notes on this project and dozens and dozens and dozens of woodworkers have sent me photographs of their version of this outfeed table. And they're great. Some have used different wood species, different finishes. Some have added things to it. Some have modified things. And all of those different builds of the outfeed table have just been great. If you'd like to see some sample pictures of other people's outfeed tables, be sure and visit my website. And thank you for watching all those videos. Now, what we're going to start on today is a companion piece to this outfeed table. I want to emulate the look and feel of this table, but it will be for a different functional purpose. So let's go take a look at some of the design considerations. What I want to build now is a storage cabinet to go underneath the extension table on my table saw. But it can't be just a storage cabinet. And the reason is pretty simple. My space in my shop is extremely limited. And furniture and fixtures that are one trick ponies, just do one thing, they just frankly don't have a very long life expectancy in my shop. I can't afford the space. Everything needs to do double duty or even triple duty if it's going to stay in my shop for a long period of time. So as I noodled through the design of this, I got to thinking, well, first, of course, I'm going to put it on wheels so it can move in and out. And it will have a top on it, so that will give it some additional functionality. But what if I could make that top go up and down? And I could raise the top up level with the table saw. I could put some rollers on it and make it into an infeed table to help me with large, bulky, big pieces of lumber. That would be great. If I could raise it up even higher, I could use it as an in-feed or out-feed table at the bandsaw. And then, what if I could take that top off and then just put a plain top on it and use it as an auxiliary workbench or maybe even as a stand for a small tool like a bench grinder or a sander or something like that. That would be great. And, of course, it will still have some storage on the inside. And extra storage in a small shop is always welcome. Well, I've made a couple of sort of preliminary, rudimentary sketches. Let's go take a look. I do love my marker board. Well, as you can see, 
The construction, at least as far as the carcass, will be similar to that used on the outfeed table. There'll be four leg assemblies with panels joining those to make the basic cabinet box. Now, the front can be drawers, cabinets, I haven't decided on that, but that'll be a face frame and these three pieces will be plywood. The leg detail we'll get into in a few minutes. That's where all the difficulty is going to be. But we'll be on wheels, of course, and there will be a top over this. To fit under my extension table, the overall height cannot exceed 29 inches. That's top wheels, the whole thing. And the depth and the width can't exceed 21 inches. So those are my measurement constraints. Now let's see how we're going to figure out the actual dimensions of the carcass itself. Before we start figuring out the detailed dimensions of the various components of this cabinet, let's talk about a couple of more very important design considerations. First of all, if we're going to use this as a roller, in-feed or out-feed roller stand, we need to be cognizant of the center of gravity. We need to keep the center of gravity as low as possible so that when we lock those wheels, the unit is completely stable. Unlike conventional roller stands, which aren't stable at all. And speaking of roller stands, if you read my October 2017 article in Highland Woodworking's Wood News Online, you know how I feel about roller stands. I don't like them very much. A couple of reasons. First of all, they're very hard to adjust and not stable. But more importantly, that long cylindrical roller on the roller stand has to be perfectly perpendicular to the direction of travel of the wood or it will have a tendency to make the wood want to skew off in one direction or the other. Imagine trying to hold a big piece of wood up to a fence and get an accurate cut when your roller stand is working against you. Let's take a look at how it works if it's perfectly aligned. Now getting that perfectly aligned can be really difficult. Let's look now at what it looks like if that roller is only two degrees off from being perfectly perpendicular to the line of travel. See how that's pulling the wood one direction? That can be dangerous and hard to control. Let's look at that one more time. So now you know why I don't really care much for roller stands. We're going to find a different way to do that that's going to be significantly better. So let's start figuring out some of our detailed dimensions. Okay, we know what our overall height of our cabinet can be. That's our constraining measurement. Now we need to figure out the length or height of the legs themselves. And the first thing we need to do is figure out the height of the caster. How far off the ground will that be sitting? Now I use all the same casters for everything in my shop, so it was a real easy thing for me to just get down on my hands and knees at the outfeed table and measure the height up from the floor to the bottom of the leg. But if you've not used the casters you're using before or don't have the ability to measure something else in your shop, an easy way to do that is with your combination square. Make sure you're using one with a bubble level and simply put the blade down on the table, 
make sure your bubble level is centered and then lock the combination square in when it's touching that wheel. And in my case, the height of this assembly is four and one sixteenth inch. So there's one dimension that we need to subtract from our overall height to get our leg dimension. The next is the top. The top of our cabinet needs to be flat and it needs to be sturdy, but it doesn't have to be perfectly dead flat like the outfeed table, which I very often use for glue ups and assembly. The top of this little table will be fine as a composite glued up piece. And what I'm going to do is glue together two half inch thick pieces of plywood. That'll give it plenty of rigidity, it'll be plenty strong, and it'll be a nominally one inch thick. Now on top of that, we need rollers to convey our material. And rather than the long tube type rollers, we're going to use these ball bearing conveyor rollers that are individual. I have a whole bunch of them. We're going to space them out on the top, screw them down, and the material will glide right over these ball bearing rollers. And unlike a tubular roller, this will not try to steer the material or go where it wants to go it will go where you want it to go. So we need to measure the height of these to find out and just like we did with the caster, we can use a combination square with a bubble level, put that on top of the roller with the blade touching the table underneath and get everything squared up, bubble in the middle, and then read off and this is one and three sixteenths inch in height. So we'll need to deduct that one and three sixteenths inch from our overall height as well. That and the caster deduct both of those and we'll have the height of our legs. Let's take a look. Okay as we discussed we really don't have room, hmm, we don't really have a need either to make a torsion box top for the top of this cabinet. But what we will do to make sure it's sturdy and as flat as possible is use two pieces of half inch plywood sandwiched together. So half inch plus half inch basically can call that one inch. And then we looked at our rollers for the conveyor top and we measured those and found out they were one and three sixteenths inches high. So together our top is two and three sixteenths inches where it will be sitting on top of the legs. And this apron around the top will hold the top tight to the legs so it doesn't shift. Okay, after determining that the casters are going to raise the whole assembly by four and one sixteenth inch, we then took a look at the components of the top and the design for that, including the wheels up here, and determined that that's going to raise the top above the levels of the legs by two and three sixteenths inch. So if I subtract two and three sixteenth and four and one sixteenth from my target overall height of 29 inches, I can determine that my legs need to be 22 and three quarter inches long. Now raising the tabletop up and down from the cabinet is going to take a little bit of engineering and a little bit of detail work, but to give you an idea of what we're going to do, we're going to use this three quarter inch square aluminum tubing. And I'll be able to cut this four foot piece roughly in half and I'll get four pieces. This will be mounted in the corners of our legs and we'll have a tightening mechanism so that we can raise up the tabletop, tighten this rod into place and it'll hold our tabletop at whatever height we set it. More details about that in a little bit. Well, fabricating the legs is gonna be the trickiest part of this whole project. 
we're going to make it out of three quarter inch plywood mitered in the corners and it's going to measure on the outside three and three quarters by three and three quarters the tricky part is we need to make dados on the inside here and here and we need to miter two more pieces of wood and glue those in to hold this square metal riser that's going to allow us to raise the top up and down and adjust it for level. I did find these little bubble levels. They're pretty cool. There's three screw holes. I'm going to mount one of these on the top of the roller table so that you can really get it dead level when you're getting ready to use it. I've also found some plastic caps that I hope are going to fit in the ends of these tubes. And I've got some threaded stock and some knobs. And we'll get into all that detail in a little bit when we start into the construction. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut out our leg blanks before making the miters. So let's get going with that. And just as an aside, in all honesty, uh, even though I've noodled on this design for a long time and I've made a lot of sketches, I have not gone through the building and construction process of this as yet. So we're going to kind of do a little design on the fly. We may make a mistake here or there, but we'll get through it. Let's go cut some wood. All right, I've got an eight foot long piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood here. It's uh, about 31 inches wide. It was left over from another project. What I want to do now is I'm going to cut this to about 23 inches. Now our finished leg length we figured out is 22 and three quarters. So what I'm going to do is with the Festool TS55 and the guide rail, I'm going to make a clean, perfect cut here. And then on the table saw, I'll cut the other edge and get it down to its final size. Now we need 16 leg blanks, but I'm going to make a few extra just in case when we're cutting the 45s, something untoward happens. It, it happens sometimes. Sometimes there's a... Uh, cavity or a blank inside the plywood that just falls in a bad place and frankly sometimes you get a little burning on an edge or maybe the edge of the 45 is not quite perfect to make a good joint so we just want a few extras. So I'm cutting this to 23. Um, I could have cut it to 23 and a half to give myself a little extra room but I've got a little dirty edge on the end of the plywood down there and I want to make sure I get that completely cut off. So let's make our first cut here. Normally you want to cut your plywood with the good face uh, down when you're using a circular saw, but with the Festool saw, uh, it cuts such a nice clean cut, you really don't have to worry about that. So let's just finish cutting out these blanks. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to cut these large blanks to the final width, which is going to be the length of the leg assemblies, and that is 22 and 3 quarters of an inch. And we've got our just cut edge against the fence, and we're ready to go.
we've got our leg blanks partially set up now. This is a finished edge, this is a finished edge, and this represents the length of the legs, 22 and 3 quarter inches. Now before I start cutting the blanks to width, I want to get one clean edge over here and get rid of this ugly factory edge. So we're going to do that right now. Alright, so this is sort of an exaggerated view of what our leg pieces are going to look like. They're going to have 45 degree bevel cuts on either side. The long side down here will be three and three quarters of an inch. Now, I've got to figure about an eighth of an inch on either end for a saw curve. That brings me up to four inches. So I'm going to cut these at four and a quarter. Quarter. That'll give me a little extra space and that'll maximize the width of this piece of wood because I'll be able to get seven blanks out of each piece. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's put our finished edge up next to the fence and let's cut our first blank and let's see how this looks. There's our face side, back side, and we'll cut two 45s, one like this, one like this, and uh, get this down to three and three quarters of an inch width, and we'll be good to go. So right now, I'm going to cut all these blanks out. Before I change the setup and tilt the blade over 45 to cut the miters in our leg stock, I want to go ahead and cut the blanks for the internal pieces that are going to be used to support our square aluminum bar stock for our tabletop support. Let me show you what that's going to look like. Okay, I have an actual drawing here. This is one to one, it's full size and you can see our pieces that make up the outside of the leg, the mitered corners, and our three and three quarter inch square legs. Now inside there are two additional pieces of three quarter inch plywood stock. These will be set into quarter inch deep dados mitered in the corner and that's going to form a three quarter by three quarter square where our metal rod is going to slip in and out to raise and lower the tabletop. Okay, so I'm going to cut the blanks at about two and a half inches. That'll be plenty big. And I should get enough out of my last piece of plywood over here to take care of all of those pieces. So let's get to cutting. Okay, now I have adjusted the blade to 45 degrees and I've set the fence so that the blade is coming out, hopefully, right here, right on the corner. That's going to maximize my width. Then once I cut that, I'll be able to turn it around and cut the other side. Now I'm being careful right here and one thing to be aware of is Cut these with the show side of your leg facing up because the bevel is going to be on the inside. This will be the inside of the leg. So we're ready to make this cut. Let's give this a shot.
can actually hear the uh, blade is, and I can see where it's touching, it's hitting the throat plate here in one little tiny section. I don't think it's going to hurt a thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I've got to cut all of these on one side. Then we'll be able to turn this around and set the fence to get our width exactly three and three quarters of an inch, and we'll cut the second side. So I've got a lot of cutting to do to get one side done. I'm going to do that. Why don't you go have a cup of coffee, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I've got all of the leg blanks cut on one side, and by the way, just to show you why I always cut extras, after I cut this bevel, look at this, there's a huge void right here that is so easy to crush, it's already splintering out. So this one will be a test piece and eventually will get discarded. Now, before I cut the other side of the bevel, I'm going to go ahead and cut the two pieces for each leg. I need eight total that go inside to brace up for the square metal piece. And what we're looking for, uh, obviously, three-quarter inch plywood's not full three-quarter inch, so you can't exactly use logic in this. Logic would dictate that if you want the inside of the bevel to be an inch, that you would set the top at um, an inch and three quarters um, for the blade, and that would be about right. But it doesn't quite work out that way because the plywood is a little thinner than three quarter inch. So what I did was I used a piece here and I set it a little wide and I just kept sneaking up until I got the small part of the bevel exactly one inch wide. Now the reason for that of course is because that's going to be set a quarter inch deep in a dado, three quarters of an inch will stick out and each side of the three quarter inch will form that square that's going to hold that piece of aluminum stock. So we're ready to cut these. I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and get these ready and then I'll turn around and cut the bevel on the other side of the legs. And there we go. We're looking for this to be one inch. That's right on. And this typically would be an inch and three quarters, but it's just a little bit less, like I said, because the plywood's undersized. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these. Okay, so now just like on our uh, small pieces, what I did was I moved the fence, I made a mark here on the top of the board at three and three quarters of an inch to establish the outside width. And then I basically just snuck up on it until I got the edge of the saw curve aligned with my mark. And uh, I think we're in pretty good shape, so let's cut one. This is the piece with the big void in it, so we'll cut this one and see how it turns out. Okay, there's our beveled piece. That is one side of a leg assembly, and that is ready to go. I'm not going to use this one because of this big void, but uh, that looks pretty good. And the outside dimension, when these are all joined up, exactly three and three quarters of an inch. Well, I've got a few of these cut now, and I just wanted to show you sort of what this is going to look like. We still got an awful lot of work to do on these legs before they're ready to glue up. Listen, I was having so much fun, I lost track of time and we've gone way, way long in this video. So we're gonna stop here. In the next installment, we're gonna cut all of the dados and be ready to glue up these leg assemblies. I hope you'll join me for that video. 
Thank you so much for watching this one.